Um, I became involved in the online mental health field in the late 1990s when the internet really started being um, available to most of us. It just seemed like a great opportunity to be able to provide um, materials to people directly. Um, and a lot of the psychological interventions that we've done and put online have, are capable of being manualised. So there were a lot of manuals around. So it really wasn't a big step to transfer it onto the technology. There have been quite a few hurdles in getting acceptance. Uh, the first thing was that <clears throat> when we put, first put in our grant application to try and get some funding for this, it was ruled, uh, uh, the comment came back saying this would never work. Um, but, you know, it was a long time ago. Um, after that, there's a lot of acceptance from the people who are using the services themselves. But I think there's a resistance from health professionals uh, who think that it may be unsafe or the quality may be lower, and yet we know that the quality is as high as it might be in face-to-face -face situations. The Digital Dog Research Program uh, is a great opportunity for me because it's a whole new research program in an area I've never really tackled before. So prior to Digital Dog, most of the work I did was in online interventions and we, we really led the field there. But this new one is really using the power of social media and trying to develop a program around the science of social media, how we can use it, um, both for, the, um, say, reducing stigma, but also for changing the way people talk about mental health. And marketers and other people have known for a long time how powerful social media is. But this program of work is really trying to understand the principles behind it, how we can use online and offline social networks uh, to make uh, tremendous changes uh, for the good in the area of mental illness. I think the digital dog program will help um, a wide range of people. I mean, one of the key things is that it will help young researchers because it's introducing a new area. It's building capacity in uh, areas such as social media and big data, which are estimated to be uh, those leading areas in the next decade. So we're training young researchers. Secondly, we're um, developing tools that might be used by policymakers to understand how uh, mental illness uh, is being um, exposed or revealed through social media. So it might be able to indicate things like hotspots and so on. Um, and it'll help people because what we want to do is detect mental illness um, for people who do not access help. Nearly 60% of people with a mental health problem do not reach um, the um, any, receive any evidence-based treatment. So if we can detect are using social media when people are in distress, we can complete the loop of them being able to provide in some way those online interventions that we've been developing in the last 15 years so that they're delivered in a personalised way to those people through the internet. Do you know, research into the digital space is really important because at the moment, for example, where there's a lot of controversy about Facebook contacting people or the Samaritans getting in contact through the friends of people who they consider are at risk of suicide. We think that's a brilliant idea, but we think that more evidence needs to be collected before people can actually interpret the meaning of the tweets. So one of the projects we've been doing here is to looking at how, to what extent people are able to reliably detect whether tweets uh, really do indicate suicide intent. And unless we know those sorts of things or how machines can be taught about what are real concerning tweets and what are just tweets which have the word suicide in them, I think it's very premature to go in and try and uh, change people or intervene in people's lives without that knowledge because I think it can be harmful. So research has to happen in these rapidly moving digital spaces.